My name is Jason Weibley, and I'm the owner and chief virtual solutions strategist for Mixspace Studios. Mixspace Studios helps businesses solve physical limitations with virtual strategies. We believe that virtual has no limitations. After a ton of push from colleagues and friends, I was asked to put together a video podcast so I could share the knowledge that I've learned about virtual solutions with all of you. The name of the show is The Monday Mix. My goal is to speak with experts in all markets and not just live events where I've devoted 15 plus years of my professional career every Monday, right here, where you're viewing it now. The past is certainly accelerated technology. I would venture to say that some could argue that we're in the middle of a technological renaissance right now. My first guests are certainly helping lead the way in extended reality technologies. Disguise, which was found in, founded in 2000, now has offices in London, Hong Kong, Shanghai, and their technology can be found in over 50 countries around the world. If you've been to a concert, watched a Broadway show, explored a museum, or simply sat back and binge watched Mandalorian or scarfed down a box of popcorn watching your favorite movie, you've seen their products in action. On their website, it says, Disguise is the platform for creatives and technologists to imagine, create, and deliver spectacular live visual experiences. Combining the leading experience production software with powerful media server hardware, Disguise empowers brands, artists, and production houses to tell stories that inspire their audiences. With that, I'm excited to introduce for our inaugural episode, Shay Langley, Anthony McIntyre, and Eli Stacy from Disguise. introduce you guys to Shay and Anthony from Disguise. Um, thank you guys both for, for coming and, and joining onto the show. Thank you for having us, Jason. Super excited to be here. For, for the technicians that are viewing the show, I think there are a lot of people that are familiar with Disguise, but there are a lot of people, planners, that I know that are joining the show for the first time that has no idea what Disguise is. So, Anthony, I thought I would start with you and just have you give us a little bit of history of Disguise. Um, tell us a little bit about, about what your company's about and what you guys do. Yeah, sure. Uh, I think the, the best way to start is just really give you a quick background visually on kind of like historically where Disguise was born out of necessity uh, for the live events industry as a means to conceptualize and deliver a production from the same platform. And we do that most effectively through software and hardware. So we're working with a lot of the, the biggest artists um, in the world, um, whether it's the Contraporium, TV production, uh, Broadway, um, architectural installations, live events for brand activations, or you know any kind of uh, experiential or pro projection mapping in, in museums. Um, Disguise really sets at the heart of these productions. 
right? And you, how long have you guys been around? Uh, well, our, our company derived out of the um, agency called uh, United Visual Artists, where Ash, uh, the original owner of the Skies and B3 Technologies, uh, wrote some code um, for a 3D visualizer to do simulation for the U2 uh, tour. Uh, this is back early in the 2000s. So um, fast forwarding probably to 2012 is when we started to produce hardware for the first time. Um, and then really servicing the live events market from there on. Fantastic, fantastic. And right now, what would you say is is this guy's primary focus? What are you guys really, really diving hard and focusing in right now? Yeah, so right now our, 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 our key goals are to service our community, um, to also look after our core markets, which are... Uh, concert touring, Broadway, fixed installations, broadcast, uh, esports. Uh, but right now, you know, obviously the shiny new toy in the industry is uh, virtual production and XR. Um, that's why we're here. Um, there has been uh, a large, a lot of developments with um, how we're being able to service virtual production um, through pre visualization with our software and then just like a robust playback system um, through our hardware and software solution. Right. Well, thanks for that. Obviously, I, I was kind of teasing it because I knew that's what we were talking about there. But Shay, I want to send it over to you a little bit because from from what I've heard, you are on an XR stage right now. Um, and uh, I thought you might be able to do a little show and tell and, and tell us a little bit about what XR is, especially for those who are joining us who have no idea what what XR is, except for a couple of letters in the alphabet. Yeah, definitely. So I'm in the little white void over here. Uh, so what is XR? XR is not a term that was coined by Disguise, but it's what Disguise refers to as extended reality. What is extended reality? It is where we're mixing our real world with the virtual world to create a mixed reality and then calling it extended reality. So I am currently on a stage. I'll show you guys what it looks like. We have two LED walls here and a floor. Uh, we have a camera tracking system. And then we have myself as the presenter here on stage. So Disguises Toolkit is what makes XR possible. Our software allows creatives and technologists to realize their vision through planning, mapping, creating content onto the physical space. And then our hardware is outputting and delivering that content onto the screen behind me with little to no latency all in real time. Um, when we're talking about XR, we have a few key features that we need to take note of. So we have a camera tracking system on top of our camera that is sending data to the disguise software and hardware telling us where it is in position to the LED so we're able to display that content from the perspective of the camera. Let me show you an example of what I mean by that. So here we have an esports environment. This is, these environments are run in environments that are very similar to what computer games are running. So those engines, this is Unreal Engine. It's made by Epic Games. I'm standing on stage. I'm able to see the content and interact with it around me. So for example, we'll turn over here. We have a player that pops up on the LED screen. I'm able to walk up as close as I want or stay as far away as I want. I'm able to interact with them. If this was a person, I could meet their eye line. The benefit of having this on stage is that it's not green screen. I don't have to look at a conference monitor. I can see exactly what's going on on stage all in real time. Uh, next, I'd like to show you our set extension. There we go. So as you saw before, there was a little tent over here. We had our office. Now it is that Unreal Engine environment. Again, back to talking about the camera tracking system, receiving that data. It all needs to be pixel accurate because we need to tell our software and hardware exactly where the LED starts and exactly where it ends. And that's what this guy is so good at. It takes a lot of rendering and computing power, and we're able to handle that all within disguise. Um, yeah, here's another, when we have, uh, we can bring in data from other sources as well. 
So we're receiving that camera tracking data, but we could also receive live data from the game. Uh, I'm, I, again, don't have to look at a conference monitor. I see the stats up here, 95 battles won, nine lives yet. Uh, less, excuse me, super easy to interact with. Uh, and yeah, that's what XR is. Yeah, you know, and I think what's really, really interesting about XR is that, you know, we see it all the time. We, we you know, on television, NFL has been using it, you know, a, a lot, especially a lot. Uh, I, I think a lot of people, a lot more people have really noticed it over the past year, but they've been using it for, for a while, right? And right. I think it's really, really exciting um, to see people really gravitating Towards it, especially in this past year. Um, how has how Anthony? How have you seen um, the explosion of this technology take off during COVID, and and why why do you think it's taken off as 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 quickly as it has? Yeah, so I'd like to. That's a good question. I'd like to say first off that um, the idea of XR, uh, extended reality, and what it means to disguise has been. Um, a concept that's been um, in R&D for quite a long time, um, since early 2018, uh, where we opened an office in LA to service the film industry, uh, to really make a, a huge impact in how uh, the film industry is utilizing real-time graphics in, uh, in camera screens, as opposed to green screen. Um, and I think things kind of shifted, obviously, when, when the pandemic hit, um, for um, creative content and for people to be engaged immersively and uh, collaboratively, um, which we were already very well positioned to service that um, from already doing um, R&D work and exhibiting at NAB in 2019 and really making a huge splash and, and doing something really disruptive in uh, the norm. Um, so then when the pandemic hit, we were, we were really uh, positioned greatly in our pre-existing tools for doing large scale pr um, production with LED screens or projection. Um, so that's kind of like how we, what we've been, what we've been up to. Yeah. You know, and I think, you know, I mean, you know, kind of like everybody, everybody was trying to struggle and try to figure out like, what should we do? How do we, how do we get around this bubble because we can't meet with people and how do we, build these really immersive experiences. And I know the artist industry, the musical artist industry, like really, really grab hold and gravitated um, to, this, to this technology. Um, you know, I know it's Silent House Partners and Studios and a lot of the other um, content companies have all kind of partnered together with you guys to be able to pr produce some of the really amazing things. Again, that, that people, I know have seen on television, like the, uh, the American Idol, Katy Perry video, uh, a lot of the other things that you guys also have in some of your teaser videos that are there. Um, this, like, this technology, I mean, just to think that you guys were really kind of working on it in 2018, I guess I really wasn't aware that it was that, um, that early. You know, I thought it was actually that you guys have been playing with it a, a little bit longer than that, that it's really boomed you know, significantly, significantly, especially in 2020, that it just jumped from, from I don't even want to call it a concept because it's, it wasn't a concept at that point anymore. It was a real, actual, tangible um, platform that people are really diving into. Where, where do you think this technology is going to go? Where is it going to grow? And how has relationships with different gaming engine companies like Epic, Unreal, and you, you, your partnerships there, how do you think that's going to come together and forge the future? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the skies is the limit. Um, and, you know, obviously with, the, with, with uh, Epic Games as, um, as a large backer in the skies, they, they trust us. They, they really see uh, the tool set that we've provided and, Mission, mission critical systems um, for yeah. and, and robust systems for scalability. Um, they really see that as a vital toolkit for really pushing the boundaries for virtual production. They've been doing it for longer than not, than we have. Uh, so there's a lot of lot to learn on both sides uh, from each other. And I just really believe that um, this is a game changer, and not just uh, what we've been doing, what Epic is doing, but also what we can do together. Um, but also um, what other gaming engines can bring to the table as well, not just Epic, but 
uh, Notch is uh, hugely into the fold and, and right. uh, unity. Yeah, for sure. Definitely, definitely. Speaking, I would say speaking of training, you know, I think, you know, they're going into the pandemic or the people who were aware of the technology, um, they, they grab and went, grabbed and went with it, right? Um, but for so many of us there, it's, it was a brand new, a brand new tool, a brand new paintbrushes that everybody was playing with. What is Disguise doing currently to help people um, learn your technology and, and help to grow this, this medium as a, as, kind of a, as a new art form? Yeah, so um, this guy, since the pandemic hit, like you said before, we were having training courses in person. With the pandemic, we were all our training or our internal training team was able to pivot their resources to bring up an e-learning platform. So that e-learning platform, you can have access to our fundamentals course, our creative sequencing course, all the way to XR workflow course. And that is all available for free. In addition, we've made our software free until June 2021. So again, available to all our community. And then in addition to that, we have on-demand webinars that are happening weekly, if not monthly. Uh, Eli's going to be doing one later this week on what is XR. Uh, I highly recommend signing up for that. It's a great way to, very similar to the demo we've seen today, but maybe a little more in depth on the technology and what's possible. But again, there are a ton of resources out there for you to get started and get learning on the Disguise Toolkit. And that, and that conference is coming up on Tuesday, I believe, right? So it's just right around the corner. Correct. Right. Correct. So it, so yeah, jump yep. on it and, and get on it. I highly recommend. There's a lot of lot of great stuff online. Um, well, I want to start to wrap things up. Is there anything else that we haven't talked about that you guys might want to, to share about disguise that that you think that people should know or or you know where again where where if you had to summarize where you think the skies is going to be in, in three to five years. How would, you, how would you wrap that up as we try to wrap the, up the session here? Anthony, we can both have answers to that. I think from my perspective and what I've been seeing is our community, we, extreme, we value their feedback to the point of they are almost the ones deciding what our year roadmap looks like, what our three, five year roadmap looks like. We've taken their feedback constantly for virtual production, for the software, for the hardware. And those are what determine the short term features that need to be made. But then also again, what will be needed in a few years. That relationship that Disguise has with their community is so valuable because without them and without the content they're creating, I mean, we wouldn't even be needed. So I love that we're able to work and trust our community to that degree. And I'm glad they're able to trust us as well. Um, that's what I would say. You should ask our community what our roadmap looks like. <laughs> yeah, Anthony, what about you? Yeah, so I mean, I've, I've, uh, I've put my years into the skies and it's, um, it's fun to, to look back and like see where we've been and where we are today and, you know, what we've done in the past is we've always met the demands and the needs of what the latest thing is. So like right now today is, you know, XR and virtual production, uh, but tomorrow could be something different. And I know, I believe full, full, full heartedly that whatever those demands are, disguise is capable and able to meet whatever demands um, or innovation will take us. You know, we have a very, um, close ear to the ground when it comes to uh, what's coming around the corner uh, and we're always uh, quick to respond to what those needs are so that's that's kind of like what I what I see yeah well I think what you guys are doing is amazing you guys have been around since 2000 and obviously have have flown with the changes in the industry and 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 you know in the world right and you guys keep putting out phenomenal work so um, I just wanted to thank all of you. I wanted to thank you both for taking some time today um, to help educate our guests and myself. And uh, yeah, thank you guys. Again, it was really, really, really great. And uh, keep doing what you guys are doing. Thanks. It's been a pleasure. All right.
Thank you, guys. Thank you, Jason, for your time. Yep, appreciate it.